Hey man, I'm really down on my luck. What can I get for two squashes and an eggplant? Well, I might have something for you for those two squashes, but uh, you know, let me have that eggplant. You know, nobody likes eggplant. All right, let me get those squashes. I mean, this is all I have. You're not gonna kick them too, are you? No, nah, I have something for you. Let me, uh, let me see what you got. All right. All right, two squashes. I got something perfect for you. All right, I got the Stoger ST9C. This thing's a good little pistol. And two squashes. Oh, man, that's a good deal. But uh, does it come with a magazine? <laughs> Magazine's gonna cost you more, bud. Oh, man, well, at least I got this. Hey guys, it's Good Deity here, and I got something cool for you this week. Right on the line with our budget category of pistols, I have something from Turkey. And you guys probably already know from the intro, this thing is dirt cheap. This is the Stoger STR9C. It is a budget-minded pistol. Uh, brand new, they are right around that 300, 350 mark. But on the used side of the market, I got this guy for 150 bucks. I mean, that's basically two squashes, at least in today's market. This is a compact style gun. It's like about a three and a half inch barrel. You got a uh, compact grip. And as you can see, you got finger grooves in there to kind of keep your hand planted, keep it up nice and high. You got a nice little flat face trigger. Uh, you got standard three dot sights. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, you got a three slot Picatinny rail. You got a very, very aggressive back strap. This reminds me of that uh, 509C that we shot not too long ago. Very aggressive, but it looks good. It looks really good. And it holds 13 rounds in the magazine. And the magazine does come with a pinky extension there. So your pinky's not dangling off or barely hanging on, depending on the size hands. But this is a really nice little pistol for the price. It's got a decent little trigger. Let's go ahead and test that trigger. We got that trigger dingus, of course. You get a little bit of take up to a wall and then you kind of squeeze. There's a little bit of mushiness and then it breaks. It's not the best trigger in the world, but let's check out that reset. It's kind of long, but it's audible and tactile. Gets you right back to that wall. It's not a click crisp wall. Like I said, you kind of roll through it until it finally breaks. So it's not the best trigger, but for 150 bucks, are you really complaining about a trigger? Not really. Definitely a cool gun. Let's go ahead and put some rounds on target and see how she does. All right, so we got 13 rounds of nine millimeter loaded up in this guy. I want to see how she performs. Uh, if it's worth 150 bucks, I mean if it shoots it's worth 150 bucks, right? If it feeds all rounds, it's worth 150 bucks. If it's accurate It's worth a lot more. Let's go ahead and put some rounds on target and see how she does Last round hold open, and it wasn't too bad. It's a little aggressive in the recoil, very aggressive in the grip. You construction workers out there who like a good aggressive grip, this guy is definitely on par with that. It does look like the back strap is replaceable, so uh, I may have to look for different back straps down the future and see if we can get a little less aggressive uh, grip texture back here, or I might shave those down a little bit. But for, for me, they're a little aggressive. For you, they might be just right on par. I will say there is a little bit of a vibration in the trigger. Um, that's kind of on par with most budget guns, but it it's not bad. Those first couple shots though, that was just me. I was, uh, I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but once I got uh, uh, reminded myself of uh, trigger mechanics and uh, and shooting fundamentals, then I would pretty much put every other round on target. So this guy is 
pretty pretty darn accurate at the defensible range that I'm sitting at right now. Uh, we may take her out a little distance and see what she can do, but uh, at, for the purposes of this gun, it's accurate enough. So for 150 bucks, not bad. But uh, how does she compare to other budget-minded guns? Some right around this same price range in the used category. All right, guys, so we have the Stoger STR9C. It is a budget-minded compact pistol. There are a lot of guns out there, and there's quite a few in this budget price range. This was about 150 bucks used. Now, in the used category, around that price range, there's a, there's a big contender to that. That is the Taurus series of pistols. Now, this one is the Millennium G2. So this one is the older of the models. So you can get this about 150 bucks on the used market. The G2s and the G3s are gonna co probably cost you closer to that 180 mark, but the Millennium, right in that 150 mark. Now, you'll notice that they're very similar in size. Uh, this was running a three inch barrel. This one's running about a three and a half inch barrel. They're very similar in grip size uh, overall. They're very similar even in design. I mean, they're very closely related. Um, well, not related, but very closely designed. Uh, but both striker fired pistols, both polymer framed. Those who don't know, the Taurus is a 12 round nine millimeter magazine and also comes with that pinky extension. But without that pinky extension, there is no room for your pinky to be on there. So you need that. Now, this is notorious because at one point in time, the Millennium guns were blowing up. Th this specific one, the Millennium G2, didn't have that co those major issues, but the Millennium Pros did. So there are pluses and minuses, but this is a budget-minded pistol compared to the 13 round magazine of this guy with a little bit nicer grip. Uh, I think that ergonomically, they're pretty on par with each other. I really do like the way the, uh, the Taurus feels in my hand. It's a little bit comfortable, a little bit more comfortable in my hand because it doesn't have that aggressive back strap. But the grip texture is still very aggressive. But let's go ahead and put some rounds on target and see how they shoot. So first couple of rounds I'm gonna put on with the Taurus. Now the Taurus. Let's go ahead and show you that trigger pull on that. So Taurus, this is uh, an a aftermarket trigger shoe that I got in here, but that's all that's really different on this. So it's got the trigger dingus, of course. The trigger dingus does not go flush. So it does kind of cut into your hand a little bit. But with the Taurus, there is, you can hear that, a little bit of grittiness to a wall. And that wall is all the way at the rear of that trigger guard. So once you get there, it's actually a nice, clean, crisp, and it's actually fairly light. Let's go ahead and check out that reset. That resets out here, and it brings you right back to the wall. But that wall, like I said, is all the way at the rear of the trigger guard. So those who uh, uh, like to fire with their their the meat of their finger, you may end up pulling a shot or two because you're not used to that long, long trigger pull. Well, with the Stoger, of course, you hit that wall, and then it's a very rolling break that's a little bit heavier than the Taurus's. Not much, but a little bit heavier. It's not a bad trigger. Not for 150 bucks, it's not bad at all. But it is something that you gotta point out. Let's go ahead and get that round that I dropped. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a couple more rounds and then we're gonna shoot the Stoger and see how she does. So we're gonna go two-handed. Let's go ahead and do the Stoger. Two-handed. I will say just on the two-hand feel, this one feels more aggressive, but this one feels more, uh, we'll just say, the muzzle rises a little bit more in feel. I uh, don't know how it depicts on camera, but 
infield, that's how I get it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do one-handed with the Taurus and see how she does on recoil. Now, one-handed with the Stoger. Yeah, I, I, in my personal opinion, the feel of these two guns are almost completely different. And I say that because with the Stoger, it feels like you're firing a five or six hundred dollar gun. It feels it feels like it's punching well above its weight class. The Millennium feels like you're shooting a two hundred dollar gun. Everything seems loose and clinky. Uh, granted, this is a old gun i've had it for a long time and i've shot the living crap out of it so the old and clanky might be because how old it is this one might have way less rounds through it but i did buy it used so i don't know how many for sure but yeah it just feels cheaper than the stoger which feels like you're shooting a five or six hundred dollar gun i don't know why i couldn't describe it besides everything just feels tight it doesn't feel like there's anything loose or jingling around. Definitely a de decent little gun. Uh, one, thing, one thing we'll point out different between these two guys is the Millennium does come with a manual safety. For, so for you new shooters, uh, that might be a deciding factor for you because a lot of new shooters do not like to carry without a safety. The Stoger is just like a Glock. The only safety is that trigger dingus. Also, the Stoger comes with front cocking serrations, so those who like to do a little bit of a press check to see if you have a loaded around, you can. It does come with a loaded chamber indicator as well. That's not visual so much as it is physical. So if you have it in your holster and you put your thumb over it, you can feel that there's a loaded chamber. While the Taurus is both a little bit of visual and a, li a little bit of physical too. It's got uh, that, that uh, loaded chamber indicator actually does say loaded when up. And it's got a little red mark on there, and it definitely protrudes a little bit more than the Stoger's. But there is no co front cocking serrations. But you do have these little divots in the front that you could grab onto, but it is kind of difficult. And you almost got to put your hand in front of the muzzle to do it. So not the best idea. All right, we're going to go ahead and finish off these last few rounds with these two guys and uh, give you my final first thoughts on the Stoger. All right, so the wind's good kicking up out here, so I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet. But uh, the Stoger STR9C, definitely a cool little pistol, definitely a decent gun for the price. In that 150 on the used side of the market, that's a great deal. Even for the three, 350 mark for a brand new one, I'd still probably buy it. This is a pretty nice little pistol. A little aggressive on that back strap for my personal taste, but nothing a little sandpaper can't fix. So definitely something that I, uh, really like and something that I might actually switch to a daily carry we'll have to see I do daily carry my shield plus so this is gonna have to definitely uh, prove that she's better than a shield plus but definitely a, a cool gun uh, definitely something that I like and you know Turks are making some really nice guns out there so good job uh, good job on you turkey and uh, keep pumping out some really cool pistols all right guys if you like that video go ahead and hit a like Comment down in the comment section if you would buy the Taurus or the Stoger. Which one do you prefer? And go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. If you have, go ahead and hit that bell icon because I'm going to be releasing a lot of videos in the next few coming weeks. I want to make sure that you all see every video that I release. So go ahead and hit that bell icon if you haven't. Guys, my personal opinion, I like the Stoger a little bit more than the Taurus. And the Taurus was one of my favorite little budget-minded pistols. So that's a lot for me, but I want to know what you think. So comment in the comment section. And guys, this is Gundini, and I'll see you for the next one. I got a god complex. Hey, just love to hate, but I never feel pressed. Got a lot on my plate, but I never get stressed. I'll take all the pressure like I'm mason this test all. And like a damn Freemason, I'll run this nation. They call me a